May Toronto Junction. He says to Harker Bay, Toronto Johnson. He says to Harker Bay, Toronto Johnson. Huh? An all new episode premieres tonight. I call for a Moore's court on Brother Toronto well, Johnson. If I built the whole plan, I ain't going nowhere. But I appreciate the concern, my beautiful African queen. I hope your hair is natural. You're not natural, baby. I see you got that perm in there. I still love you. You're gorgeous, but you're not nappy. You got to be nappy, baby. You got to be nappy. I can't grab it. I can't have it. It only takes a little bit of white brainwash to activate the cool chip. Heterosexual couples only. This is not a government funded activity. I have the right to discriminate. Heterosexual couples only. Donations. Donations. Gifts. Gifts. I'll be that more you gon' be that more. I'ma be that more you gon' be that I'll be that more you gon' be number. To Hawk a Bay one line till the law call my number. I'll be that more you gon' be number. We're going to have a national coons conference at FDMG. Yes, brothers and sisters, we have to have a national coons conference. Anybody who tells you they're running for office to help somebody, smack their ass in the face. What you want to do? You want to box? You want a street rumble? Or you want to get into the intellectual boxing ring? Tyler Perry. God damn, brother. Can we please? Consider some other movies. Suit and tie niggas. Suit and tie niggas. See, I got credentials. You ain't got none, you dirty nigga. Ain't you the second nigga who sold drugs to go to kill it? Didn't your dumb ass say that on YouTube? You sold drugs to go to kill it? You counterproductive degenerate. You sell drugs to go to kill it. I'm right here. Come bring it. I told you consciousness, and I don't play with y'all like that. But I knew you had to do it, nigga. They gassed you, and now they gonna ask you, nigga. They gassed you. He says to Harker Bay, and I know Toronto Johnson. Y'all talk about the Grandmaster J with the N fact. Okay? I can't speak to him either. I can see the value of a brother showing up with a militia, with armed weapons, letting the white power structure of America know we ain't going to take this shit no more. I can respect that. Is he serious? I don't. Us divided. We are the United States of America. We are the Indivisible unto God. My point is, I'm not slandering Grandmaster J. I haven't seen sufficient proof. I be that more you gon' remember. I'ma be that more you gon' remember. I be that more you gon' remember. To hawk a bay front line till the law call my number. I be that more you gon' remember. I'ma be that more you gon' remember. That's right. The more than you a friend of mine. I was told to watch my enemies now hold my line. Those who speak against the prophet, they speak against me. And I speak about the to Who wants the Toronto Johnson? You went by and you back to Morocco, the mountains, Mississippi, and Quebec. Told you you wasn't black. Prove it a straight back. You tripping off drugs, you need to be tripping off that. Now here we go again. And now, our feature presentation. He says to Harker Bay. I be that more you gon' remember. I'ma be that more you gon' remember.
peace and love, family. Are you in the building? Let me make sure I can hear you. I want to make sure I can hear everybody in the building, family. I didn't want to get too pumped up tonight because I wanted this is the precursor to the show that I am going to do real soon. Can y'all hear me? Is can everybody hear me? Family, we 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 are hold up. Here we go. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. What's up, Javon Muhammad? We can't see you, GS. No, man, you might have to refresh Sunny Box and I can see me. I'm looking on my phone. I can see me. <laughs> Sunny Box, you might got to refresh. You follow me? Yeah, I can see me. I'm looking good. I'm looking good. I'm looking good. What's up, Christian News Interviews? The best intro on YouTube. Christian News got bars. Family, I need everybody to share this, family. Like, like this is a serious show. This is a serious one tonight. Um, and it's going to get heated in a minute. Um, this is a serious, serious show, family. Um, I want y'all to hashtag uh, all of the gun clubs, black power organizations for this show. Can y'all do that for me? Can y'all hashtag Huey P. Newton Gun Club or the acronym? You know, can y'all hashtag um, all of the gun clubs, all of the freedom fighter groups, can you hashtag them for me? Can you, I don't know if it'll come up in the chat or in the comment section. I'm asking everyone to hashtag. You follow what I'm saying? What's up, Leonard Wilson? What's up, family? ODB, what's, what's going on? What I'm going to be doing when they pulling up and all that, what I'm going to be doing? I need y'all to hashtag CC hashtag New Black Panther Party. I mean, even if you don't rock with some of them, this is something that could be happening to you. The real revolutionaries are silenced while the fake ones are thriving. So tonight, family, I'm telling you right now, we need to really come together. JG, what it do? Uh, we really need to come together on this one. We got to come together on this one. We can disagree, but I'm going to tell you, there is no reason, there is no reason why Rakim Balagoon should be incarcerated right now and everybody is not putting their dimes, their coins, or even their uh, uh, muscle together to make sure that this brother see the light of day. There's no reason for this, fam. There's no reason for this. I didn't even know what happened. This is my brother. Anybody know? Do anybody know Rakim Balagoon? And I might be saying it wrong, but he's been on the show before. We talked behind the scenes many a time. Do anybody know the brother? Do anybody know the brother? Y'all don't even know the brother. Did, did anybody even hear about it? Did anybody even realize that the brother was incarcerated? Did anybody realize that he was one of the first ones that was targeted for the black identity extremists? When they made that little thing for the black identity extreme, and he was the first one targeted. What's up, Yasmin? Anybody know that? Do you know we get on these airways all the time when we talk this Islam and praise the Lord and black power and shalom and uh, ashe and hotep. But how many times we come together for something like this? How many times we come together? when something really is going on and a brother needs your support. How many times? We're going to do another show on Saturday to break down what actually happened in his case. But today is the precursor. Today is the precursor of the presentation of real, of real Black revolutionaries, real African revolutionary, real indigenous revolutionary, real revolutionaries, period, are being silenced while these frauds are thriving. And I'm telling you, my brother and my friend, Rakim Balagoon, needs your support like never before. And I'll explain that later. I'll explain that later. And this is not no internet guy. This is not no guy on the internet doing podcasts. This is not one of those guys that you see uh, uh, always 
flapping off at the gums, always bumping their gums. This is not one of them. He's not one of them. This is one that is in the field, 10 toes down, always around, representing for his people. This is not none of these internet revolutionaries that you're used to. This is why many people might don't even know who he is. Because he's not one of them internet revolutionaries. This is a brother that lived this life. This is a brother that has been taken away from his family for some, Shh, hold up, we gonna get into that in a minute. So as you see, I got this real revolutionary silence and I got our brother, General King Samir on a flyer. A shout out to Gorilla Mainframe. Big up to Gorilla Mainframe, but um, one of the brothers in Gorilla Mainframe, which um, my brother um, Bulagoon is uh, uh, the head of, a part of, One of the brothers of Gorilla Mainframe said, why did you put my brother on the flyer with that reactionary? And he was referring to King Samir Shabazz, and that was in the comment section. And I wanted the first to address that. The reason why I put King Samir Shabazz on the flyer, mind you, I've heard that King Samir Shabazz don't like to hawk a bay. Mind you, I could care less. One thing I recognize when I look at my people, I look at genuine passion and genuine realness. Now, that passion could be reckless. It could be reactionary. It could be all of these things that people want to say about it. But I look at it as either it's real or it's fake. When I look at Grandmaster J, I ask myself, is it real? Is it fake? I conclude that it was fake. When I look at Malik Zulu Shabazz, I ask myself, is it real or is it fake? When I see Malik Zulu Shabazz, I see fake. You don't have to like me because you like him. I'm telling you what I see. My brother Rakim is friends with Sister Crystal Muhammad. In fact, my brother called me many a times, quite a few times, and asked me, brother, what's going on with my sister and yourself? We need to stop this. See, he didn't do that on the internet. He didn't make a video. He picked up the phone and called me. Rakim picked up the phone and called me and said, what's going on with you and my sister? Now, my position remained the same, <clears throat> but our friendship never changed. That's a stand-up guy. You hear what I say? Press seven if you know what I mean. Although he did not agree with my position on Crystal Muhammad, our friendship remained solid. And I'm pretty sure that him and Crystal friendship remained solid. As long as there wasn't no, no weird stuff going on because he's a solid guy. Shout out to him, Nugent, in the building, because he's a solid guy. Now, something came across my inbox a few weeks ago that the brother was incarcerated. Then the first thing that I could think of is that, oh, man, they targeted him again. Talking about Rakim Balagoon. I said, they targeted him again. I couldn't find any information on our brother. And the person that actually 
inbox me, put me in tune with somebody that could inform me exactly what was going on. So today I finally spoke to his peoples and I found out what was happening. And I even thought as we was going through the conversation, I even thought of ways that they try to take us down. Or they try to take true freedom fighters down or the ways that they do is very, the ways that they do it is very, very intricate. You know, some of the times we don't know that we may be walking into a trap anytime we put ourselves in position of confrontation with anybody, whether it look like us or whether they don't look like us. It's kind of like when Big Shirley now pulled up to the crib, live on YouTube. I looked at that as a trap. I looked at that as a form of baiting myself. And then baiting me, once they get you into that system, they can pretty much make the rules as they go along. And so I look at a lot of people trying to bait me in this day and time. And I ask myself, do I walk into that trap or do I just look at the trap and laugh at it? Well, when you have people like Rakim that's out and about, mind of his business, doing the things necessary for his family, those sorts of traps can come from any direction. And you or my brother could just take it as a random occurrence because you're just going through your day. But when we talk about that, we'll get into exactly what I'm saying by, by that these traps are set up for us. However, when these traps are set, we should have enough people on deck to take that trap and pry it back to get it up off us. You follow me? You follow what I'm saying? Now, again, the reason why I have General King Samir on the flyer is because he's a very outspoken brother. Some would say reactionary. But I say a very outspoken brother as it relates to his ideals of black power and revolution. That doesn't mean that everybody have to agree with his methodology. However, I know without a doubt or contradiction from what I've witnessed from the brother that he's genuine to what he believes in. Not genuine to what I believe in, not genuine to what you believe in, but genuine to what he believes in. And something stood out to me a few months ago. Now, you know, I have, an, I have, this, I have this feeling that we got these YouTubers that's playing the role of YouTubers and revolutionary or those who are covering stories to also bait people. Also, you have YouTubers that would act as if they really with that, but not really with that. But they would still try to act like they frontliners as it relates to the revolution. So I seen a video, I seen a video a while ago, about a couple months ago, of Brother Samir. And I've done research on Brother Samir from his affiliation with Malik Zulu Shabazz. One thing that always stood out to me is that Malik Zulu Shabazz always seemed 
to wiggle out a compromising situation as it relates to um, encountering the police or the authorities. It seems to me that everybody next to him they seem to get hemmed up. And if they don't get hemmed up, they ultimately seem to be characterized as them people, or they walk away. It's one way or the other. It's one way or the other. So when I look at real revolutionaries in this day and time, I look at I look at organizations like Guerrilla Mainframe, um, and my brother Rakim. I look at people like the brother that led the Tulsa, Oklahoma, coming together. I forget his name. Solid guy to me so far. Not thirsty for the camera, not thirsty for the ambulance chasing but genuinely want to see something as it relates to the protection of our people and our community. And there's a few of them. The brother down in Louisiana, I forget their name off the top. I, I, the names escape me, but it's only a few of them. Many of them love the camera. Many of them love the theatrics. But if you love your people, then you should be supporting. You should be supporting the cause of getting your brother true justice. And you're going to hear about it in a second. But let me show you something. I think we have gotten to the point where we don't even know what a revolution, a revolutionary look like. I think in this day and time, we do not even know what a revolutionary look like anymore. I think in this day of Twitter, in this day of TikTok, in this day of YouTube, we do not know what a revolutionary look like anymore. So if one comes and turn on a camera and they speak eloquent, and one comes and turn on a camera and they speak with a charismatic persona, we buy into that as being some form of liberating quality as it relates to a revolutionary, as it relates to a religious uh, uh, leadership, as it relates to a social gathering to take us to the promised land. So we'll just gravitate to anybody that's charismatic and anybody that got the gift of God. But we have forgotten what a revolutionary looked like. So I want to go over a few, a few, a few things in a minute. Matter of fact, no more minutes left. Let's go. Family, I'm going to be hard on this brother. Because the brother been around for 20 some years with nothing to show for his revolutionary tactics or leadership. Nothing. Family. True revolutionaries do not have time for the horse and pony show. Do you hear what I say? True revolutionaries do not have time for a circus. Do y'all hear what I say? Press seven if you hear what I say. True revolutionaries do not have time for a circus, man. They too busy Fighting the good fight. True revolutionaries don't have time to debating some from fruitless topics. True revolutionaries is not this. This is not true revolutionary. And don't you mistake it to be revolutionary. This is not true revolutionary. 
You want true revolutionary? That's true revolutionary. Not for nothing as the end of Shea stayed a hallmark of revolution and every expression of the democratic radical dissident in the 21st century. Behind the t-shirt image lies the reality of a man whose vision of liberation was at once romantic, ruthless, personal, poetic, and compassionate. Born in a middle-class Argentinian family in 1928, Guevara explored Latin America's poverty on his motorcycle while training as a doctor, vowing to fight to change what he beheld and masterminding Cuba's revolution as a vision for the world. Stop right there. Shay is riding on a bike, becoming a doctor, preparing for a revolution. You hear what I say? Let me give you a little bit of timeline so you know what a revolution looked like. Stop falling for these jokers playing games with your desire for freedom. We need to get back into history to know what a real revolutionary looked like. Let me give you a little bit of timeline. Guevara's father taught him to play chess, and he took a part in the local chess tournament. He entered the University Bu Buenos Aires to study medicine. One thing we know about true re revolutionaries, they are educated. One thing about true revolutionaries, they are educated, and they use their education for the revolution. You hear me? During summer break from university, Shea made a 4,500 kilometer tour of Royal Argentina. Now, Shea took a year off of study together with Al Alberto Gorando, made an 8,000 kilometer tour of much of South America. He visited Argentina, Chile, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, Panama and Florida and the United States. He was angered by the poverty and poor working conditions. You hear what I said? And poor working conditions of laborers and miners in South America. He considered their plight to be the result of capitalism where the wealthy exploited the poor. Now what you now what you would see with Shay, he 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 acted on his disappointment. Let me put the cash out for my brother in there. Uh the brother, my brother, my brother need the cash app so he can get that shirt. Hey Gerald, Gerald, when you order the shirt on the cash app, just put your size. And email me your address. I'm gonna put the cash app. Somebody will put the cash app in there. Uh, my brother, I'm, I'm gonna get him that shirt tomorrow. It's going in the mail tomorrow, brother. Sean Sean, I got him, Sean Sean. I got him, Sean Sean. Man. <laughs> so now listen. In 1952, he returned to the university to resume his studies. Now watch this. One thing you're going to find with true revolutionaries is he completed his medical degree and was fully and was a fully qualified doctor. Now watch this. He completed his medical degree <coughs> and was a fully qualified doctor. <clears throat> he left Argentina on another traveling tour 
of South and Central America. This time he visited Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, and El Salvador. Watch this family. This guy is moving on the energy of what he stands for. It says, as travel through Central America, Guarava became uh, uh, further convinced of the exploitation of capitalism. So now you get to see that his whole drive was from the capitalistic system. So I want to say this. When people claim to be revolutionary or revolutionists or whatever you choose to call it, one thing you have to ask yourself, what is the drive? What is the drive? What is driving? Many of these people, if you ask that question, you'll notice that the camera driving them, that the spotlight is driving them. True freedom is not driving them because as you will see in one second, watch this. I'm going to drop all the way down to 1954, June 27th. American forces invaded Guatemala and President Arbenz was forced to resign. She vowed to fight with revolutionaries for the overthrow of Arbenz's successor, Armaz. But he was frustrated by the group's inaction. You hear what I said? She vowed to fight with the revolutionary. See, you see, you see something different here. This guy is really ready to rock and roll. Whether you agree or disagree or whatever, this guy is ready to rock and roll. Now, if you study the history, you can find him involved in a lot of political things around the world. Most importantly, the political standing of Cuba under Fidel Castro. But when he went to Bolivia in 1967 to fight, the Bolivian forces attacked the remaining rebels and Guerrero was injured and taken to prison, taken as a prisoner. And you know what happened to our brother Shay? And I say brother in the fight, you know what happened? He was shot nine times, executed, because he dedicated his life to overthrow imperialism. He wasn't shining and rhyming in front of cameras. He wasn't acting as if he was a doctor with a stethoscope that would qualify him as a revolutionary. He was actually 10 toes down on the ground fighting for what he said he believed in. Now, this is not for everybody that may not, that, that may not feel that this route is appropriate for them. But we can only hold people by the standard in which they say they believe in. And what I'm telling you is that this is not real. This is not real. Everybody know who that is. Don't we? Everybody know who that is. Follow his story. Follow his story. Follow Fred Hampton's story. Where Fred Hampton Gun Club at? Follow his story. And you will see what a revolutionary looks like. That's right. You will see what a revolutionary look like. If you're looking at people like A.J. Frazier and all of these little funny characters acting like they're jumping out of planes to save people, that ain't what no revolutionary look like. If you want to know the blueprint of what a revolutionary look like, 
Research Fred Hampton and compare it to these weirdos that you see today. That's all you got to do. You ain't got to get mad at Tahaka Bay because I'm calling him out. Research him. Anybody know? Anybody know Patrice? Le, anybody know? Anybody know Latrice Labuma? You want to know what a revolutionary look like? Study Brother Patrice. Nah, y'all don't want to do that. Y'all want to accept these crazy people on YouTube and social media claim to be freedom fighters. Remember when? You know why this is of great interest to me? You know why this is of great interest to me? Because it was these people. Shout out to SETI. It was these people that would grab Africans of the Congo that had fezes on their head, put up there by the Belgium uh, 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 police, soldiers, if you will, and in this day and time of the social media and the bodega scholars, they would say, ah, oh, look at Moors, look at the Moors, when in fact, these was Congolese, you know what I say, these was Congolese, and they was forced to wear fezes by the Belgians that had taken over the Congo. You follow me? But when you look at Lumumba, and I'll just read. I'll just read. His relentless attacks on Belgian rule soon fractured the MNC, resulting in leadership split in 1959. Undaunted, Lumumba insisted on complete dismantling this melting Belgian rule. You hear what I say? This is a real revolutionary here. He insisted on dismantling. You feel me? In October 1959, he was arrested for allegedly inciting anti-colonial riots and sentenced to six months. Shortly thereafter, the Belgian government summons a conference in Brussels to discuss the future of Congo. Confronted by the MNC threat of boycott, the government released Lumumba. At Brussels, Lumumba boldly condemned Belgian rule and advocated immediate independence, convinced the eminence of Congolese freedom. Belgium set aside June 30, 1960 as Independent Day. This is freedom fighting. This is freedom fighting right here. Freedom fighting is not looking at Europeans and calling them some pigs and then running or throwing your hands up when they're ready to spray you down. That's not revolution. That's not revolutionary. In fact, it's just like the brother from the mainframe said on the comment section, that's reactionary. So when you see somebody hooping and hollering, oh, the pig this and the pig that and the pig this and the white man this and the white man that. No, uh, uh, uh. True revolutionaries are educated on political things as well as the social construct that the political landscape has used to oppress people. And they bring people together to get behind the concept that this is a political thing that is happening as it relates to the oppression of our people. It's a political thing. It's not an individual thing. You feel me? It's not, a, it's not an individual thing. It's a political thing. And so in order to combat a political thing, you must become politically educated like the Black Panther Party that was a political party. The new Black Panther Party, with all due respect for all those that join and their heart is in the right place, I'm not talking about you, but the new Black Panther Party do not have a political agenda as it relates to solving the problems that our people are faced with. They don't have it. Nor do they know how to pick apart the political construct. One person, one cell, or one cabinet at a time. Therefore, when you look at people like 
Big Shirley. You look at people like these people that front for the camera. Because you haven't studied Lumumba, then you don't know that it doesn't match up. I was able to see that Grandmaster Jay was a phony because I knew history. I know how a real revolutionary looks. I know how they look because I know what my ancestors represented or those that came just maybe 20 years before I was born looked. So when I look at them and I look at you and you don't resemble them, then you're not them. It's the same thing. It's the same thing I look at with Morris Science. I look at Prophet Noble Drew Ali. I look at these crazy people dressing in fezzes. I look at all these crazy people talking about you got the right to travel. And I look at Prophet Noble Drew Ali and it don't match. I say, nope, that's not it. I look at true black power. And then I look at these crazies and I say, nope, that's not it. And I don't care how much influence they are able to get. If they don't match, you must detach. Somebody, I need somebody to get my sound bites. That was a good one. If it don't match, you must detach. You hear what I say? Family, we are in critical times right now. They are sending any and everybody that look like us to annihilate us with mis or disinformation. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to send anybody that look like us, talk like us, dress like us, walk like us with mis and disinformation. So when you look at Lumumba, the movement National Congolese won the majority of the general election held in May 1960 and Lumumba became prime minister of the Congo. That's called revolution. With his political rival, Joseph Kasavubu, as president. Lumumba scathing denunciation of colonialism, ruffled feathers not only in Belgium, but also in the United States and Great Britain. That's called. That's called revolution feel me news break odb i got somebody coming on sunday and we're gonna i got a um i got a brother from the suny community coming on sunday and we're gonna dialogue about that information on sunday as long as he don't back out so it's gonna get busy now, with that being said, my, my brother said revolution is a slow process of organization and political education that leads towards liberation. Say it again. Look at your neighbor and say it again. Revolution is a slow process of organization and political education that leads towards liberation. Yes, indeed, family. This is why they get so mad at me. Listen, you know why they get mad at me? Because they have seen all these little quirky, kooky moors over the years that did not involve themselves in this conversation. Do you see what I'm saying? They, they only thing that the, listen to me, fam, give me a sidebar for a second. The only thing that Moors got a mic in their face would talk about is defending their position, their positioning on Moorish science as they understood it. But see, I understand things a little bit different. I understand this is all our problem. I understand whether I call myself a Moor and whether you call yourself a Christian or whether you call yourself black power or whether you call yourself pan-Africanism, whether you call yourself indigenous, the same boot is on all of our neck. This is all of our problem. This is all of our problem right now. So I'm not one of those moors that you might be used to from five years ago that trapped themselves in a box. I have always put myself in the center of the conversation. Always. Because I'm not them. They believe that them and you are different. I believe and I know that you and I are one. You follow what I'm saying? I believe and I know that, that you and I are one. Your conversation is my conversation. This is why some weirdos would say, uh, well, well, why are you talking about uh, 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 black issues? You fool, my mother still used the terminology black. 
My sister still used the terminology African-American. You fool. You know, you know, people will have the audacity to ask me something that's stupid. You moors, y'all don't deal with black power. Y'all don't deal with it. Listen, let me tell you something. Man, we dealing with power. Power to the people. That's what we dealing with. I, I, I got a little bit of hype right there, but we dealing with power to the people. Prophet Nobu Ali makes a statement that this is the uniting of Asia. This is the uniting of the Asiatics. And whether you subscribe to the term Asiatic or not, one thing for sure and two things for certain, when a Moorish American understand it, that means we are all one from the land of Asia because we know that Africa as a landmass is a European construct. Yeah, that the landmass was one. So with that being said, we're talking about the uniting of all of our people who come from the soil. Follow me? So with that being said, let me get back to it. We need to know what a revolutionary look like. Even when we get down to Mega Evers. You follow me? When we get down to Mega Evers. After pulling into his driveway and getting out of his car, carrying an NAACP t-shirt reading, Jim Crow must go. Ever was shot in the back and died at the local hospital. Less than an hour later. He was murdered just hours after President John F. Kennedy speech on a national television to support civil rights. Now, with that being said, Mega Evers, he is one that believed in marching and boycotting. And he was making true progress. They were filing lawsuits and they were making progress. And so, once again, you begin to see that these revolutionaries, although some travel different paths, these revolutionaries were making progress in the path in which they traveled. So I ask you, show me some progress with these revolutionaries today that claim to be leaders. I'm talking about these Hollywood ones in front of the camera all the time. Show me. You ain't gonna see no progress because they're not really about progress. What they really about, their own personal success as it relates to being seen and heard like a movie star. That's it. All of this stuff that you see on the internet is an illusion as it relates to freedom. Very, fruit, very few you will see are dedicated to really getting this boot up off our neck. There's many different pathways, though. Some people got to conquer the land. Some people got to conquer politically. Some people got to conquer economically. Some people got to conquer physically. So there's many pathways. And there's not one pathway that's greater than the other. But one pathway is not spitting silly rhetoric that never gets nobody anywhere. Rest in peace to our leaders that show us what revolutionary look like. You follow me? Mega Evers. Now, let me stop for a second. One thing that we have to be aware of, family, whether people believe in all that you believe, we should all have one core belief. And that core belief is that one day we will be free. 
And in order for us to be free, we have to play an active role in our freedom. And what I mean by free, this is not normal where a whole nation of people are ruled indefinitely by another nation of people. Arabs rule Arabs. They're brothers and sisters. Nigerians rule Nigerians. You hear me? Mexicans rule Mexicans. Russians rule Russians. Europeans or the imperial imperial system rules you. It doesn't matter if you Johnny come lately and try to add to the system. The system that we see is a Republican form of system that was hijacked from our forefathers, remixed and sold back to you and used to conquer you. And many people that get in the system, they become an active role to perpetuate the system that has been remixed and used against you. But all around the world, Italians rule Italians. Chinese rule Chinese. Japanese rule Japanese. And all of them try to work together for a common good when they're able to. All of them. So it's time for you to understand that in your mind that one day we will be free. And the way that we are going to get free is that we have to understand that the real people in China are your brothers, whether you like it or not. The real people in Mexico, it was a saying that a Mexican uh, sister had said to me when she was working for me years ago in my cleaning business, my janitorial business, she had mentioned to me that there's a saying in Mexico that every light-skinned Mexican have an African in the back room, have an have a, have a African grandmother in the back room. I think that's how it went. Every light-skinned Mexican have an African grandmother in the back room. That's a running joke in Mexico. Follow me. That's a running joke in Mexico. Because we're all related. We're all related. There's only a small portion of humanity that chose to break off and try to dominate the rest of the planet. But for the most part, we are all from the same source and we identify to the same things when you get down to the nitty gritty. So we have to begin to wake up to understand who are our real comrades beyond our neighborhoods, beyond our state, beyond our country. We got to wake up to that. Now, with that being said, we're going to have some here that's going to play this game. They're going to play this game of black power. Now, let me show you something real quick. I know I'm going to get some mad. They're going to play this game called black power. And in this game called black power, it further puts you into a box. In this game called black power, they demonize everybody except for people that have the phenotype of themselves. Talk to him, Prophet Noble Drew Ali. What I mean by the phenotype as themselves, that if, 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 if the person that is talking about it has nappy hair, then everybody should have nappy hair. If the person that's talking about black power have a wide nose, then everybody should have wide nose. Well, in fact, it doesn't work like that. If you go down to Ethiopia, you will find the darkest of dark brother with silky wavy hair. If you go to the Congo, you will find the same brother with 
coarse nappy hair. You understand what I'm saying? So when somebody tried to put our people in a box of one type, one look, that becomes a part of the psychological divide and conquer that we perpetuate against ourselves. So when you go all the way to the far east of India, you will see the darkest of Indian to the lightest. The point that I'm making is we got to stop drawing these demarcation lines and making ourselves smaller than what we are. Because the powers that be have used those demarcation lines. They have used them against us and they use them against other nations that could have been more stronger, more powerful, if we all understood that we come from the same source. We're not tripping off the ones that try to be lily white, European, or whatever you choose to call it today, but the ones that know who they are. Those are the ones that is ready to ride out. Do y'all know back in Elijah Muhammad day that they was uniting with the Japanese, the Vietnamese, and even some Koreans? Anybody know that? Anybody know that? They wasn't, they wasn't just uniting with someone that was called the Asiatic Black Man of Asia. Do you know there was Moors also uniting with that Allah's army? They had, they had, a, I'm, I'm going to do a pre, I'm going to do a presentation on it. It was a law's army, but that's another story. But we got to watch these people that are spewing this crazy little black power stuff that is perpetuating the separation. Because I agree, we need the power, but in order to get the power, we need to know where the power lies and the power lies in the people. So you need the people. With that being said, family, back to what I was said. This is not revolution. Now, again, let me share with you why I put Samir Bay. I said Samir Bay, King Samir on the flyer. The reason why I put him on the flyer is because I actually seen somebody silence him quite recently. Let me play it real quick. So this is what Samir was saying on somebody broadcast. Like I said, you don't have to like Brother Samir, but listen to this. I was on the train coming from Philly to New Jersey. Bilal was sitting with me. This was before I knew Bilal was an agent. Now, hold up. Now, I don't know if this is the same Bilal. If y'all was watching the show, there was a brother named Bilal where Biko got locked up in North Carolina and it was a brother named Bilal that stepped out the car, talked to the police and everybody in the car got locked up. However, Bilal walked away. Now, I got to do a little bit more research to find out if this is that Bilal. But I'm almost 99% sure that this is the same Bilal. I'm almost 99% sure. And you'll know why in a minute. Listen. Malik never mentioned on that phone call that Bilal was a goddamn agent. He tried to use the fact that Bilal was a bounty hunter. 
I know brothers and sisters who are bounty hunters that are revolutionary as hell. Let me let y'all in on something that you did not know. The entire East region. I'll stop there. So this Samir, King Samir, is putting this out there on this platform to inform people. Again, now remember, word was given back to me that Samir do not rock with me. Because I came at Crystal Muhammad and he was a part of Crystal Muhammad. What's up, Gary Hawkins? And he was a part of Crystal Muhammad outfit. So they said that the brother didn't rock with me because I had came for Crystal Muhammad and her shady ways. Well, ultimately, he had to distance himself from Crystal Muhammad also because of her shady ways. Now. Malik sits up here and lies to each and every one of you. Talking about he has a radar for pigs. Well, Bilal was cleared to be black in the new Black Panther Party. Guess who he was cleared by? It was not King Samir. It was Malik Zulu Shabazz who cleared Bilal, the fucking agent, to come back in the ranks. Now, we're going to get to the point why I'm playing this in a minute. And I need you to keep up because remember, this is called silencing silencing true revolutionaries real revolutionary silence you follow me you're gonna get to why i'm playing this in a second and i told you it's a lot of funny business on youtube too much funny business going on can't trust no one with vetting them a lot of funny business going on YouTube with this Moorish stuff, with anything that relates to freedom. Follow me? We're going to get back to that whole, we're going to break down that whole video soon. But let me keep it going real quick. Myself, Bilal, and another comrade was there. Malik hadn't even gotten there yet to the mansion. While we were sitting in the yard of the mansion, the lights went completely out. Hey, listen, I'm from Philly. You dig? When shit like that pop off, somebody's ass get ready to get popped. Here I am in Africa, not knowing what the hell's going on. The lights went completely out. I grabbed the shotgun, stood up at the table, and aimed it directly at the front gate. Bilal, before he handed me the shotgun, y'all, put the shotgun shell in the goddamn gun backwards. Red flag number two. So guess what would have happened if I would have pulled that trigger? And again, we're going to go all over that. But the point that I'm making is 
is that when I was talking to Bobby and a few other people about the Biko situation, and I said, I said on that show, I said, whoever walked away while everybody else get locked up is suspect. Because when the police pulled over the car, there was a gun in the car. And it was said that Bilal claimed ownership of the gun. And then there was a legal gun there. Or registered gun, if you will. But everybody gets locked up but Bilal. And here is another video talking about Bilal. But that's, that's another conversation. I would love to have Bilal come on for an interview. But that's a, another conversation. But with that being said, now watch this. This is what I mean by silencing. So here we go. This is that trigger. About an hour and a half later, Malik finally comes to the mansion. We're all sitting at the round table. Watch this. Bilal starts an argument. Very unnecessary ass argument. Listen, family. Watch this. Red flag number three. The entire time we was in Africa, Bilal Muhammad went against the grain of every maneuver, every instruction. Now, We wear our uniforms to the hold on, team. Hold on, excuse me, excuse me. Hold on one second. It's a public platform. You kind of look, you kind of look sloppy with your content, man. I, I hope you're speaking cold. It's a public platform. This is a platform called Major TV. They invited this man to his platform. They invited him to the platform. You hear what I say? They invited him to the platform, and as he was speaking and breaking it down. O.C. the Great invited this man to this platform. This is Grandmaster Jay. This is the guy that been chasing Grandmaster Jay around with a camera. Been all up in the club with Grandmaster Jay. Now watch this. You kind of look sloppy with your content, man. I, I hope you're speaking cold. It's a public platform, so you got to be careful what you're saying, brother. You know, so I, I know you have a reaction to what happened the other day, but you have to be a bit more respectful with the content because of these people, you know, the enemy and whatnot. We got to know how to speak in code. So all due respect, continue. But I want you to be conscious of things you're saying, man. Brother, I'm very conscious of everything I'm saying. That's why I'm saying it. I know, brother, but at the same time, you have to be discreet. Have to be discreet. You're saying things that's, that's, that's kind of revealing. I That's like the purpose of this call, right? Let me start right there. I like what Cryptonomics just said. Cryptonomics said he don't know King Samir. Now, that's that's what I'm talking about, Crypt. This is how you know that these people are not familiar with the revolutionary community. Everybody who somebody knows King Samir, whether you are in or around these revolutionaries or conscious or whatever you choose to call it everybody king samir has made headlines many many a times before i even knew it was two black panthers i knew king samir this guy do not even know who king samir is and these people are covering revolution Come on now. This is what I'm telling you. This is what I'm telling you about these people that have these cameras now and claim to be YouTubers, revolutionaries, or supporting cast of revolutionaries. They ain't really about that life. They're scared to lose a YouTube channel for telling the truth or allowing someone to tell the truth. Now, I can understand the cursing. 
and I can understand the threats, but he ain't did none of that. He's only telling the story. He's only telling the story of his experience. Now watch this. Unbelievable to me. And these people have been checked. These people have been checked off as official. OC the Great, Major TV. They are ushering in agents. And when a real one come in, ho, 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 you got to be careful. To reveal the agents, right? Yeah, but I'm just saying... I Sometimes you have to be discreet. Have to be discreet. You're saying things that's 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 kind of revealing. That's the purpose of this call, right? To reveal the agents, right? Yeah, but I'm just saying. Look, listen, just listen, bro. I, I didn't come on here to play with this bullshit. I didn't come on here to milly mouth and dilly dally. I speak the truth regardless to whom or what. So I tell you what. Here's what I'm gonna do. Cool, cool. And that's how the interview ended. You feel what I'm saying? So it didn't even get into the true purpose of what the interview was dedicated to. But you see what I'm talking about silencing? Like you don't have to agree with King Samir. But if you're going to have King Samir on your show, the only thing you need to tell him, brother, keep the language down. Brother, don't make no threats. The show is yours. Because that's how I would do it. Call it out. Because what he had to say could potentially save lives. Now, we know if you follow King Samir, now we know King Samir can go in. We already know. We already know without a doubt or contradiction. But in fact, that was a mild King Samir. You feel me? That was a mild King Samir. That wasn't even, that wasn't even a, that wasn't even the King Samir that he could have been. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what he, you know what I mean? But you got to remember that this guy was connected to Grandmaster J. Major TV is connected to Grandmaster J. My bad. You know what I mean? He's connected to Grandmaster J. So you don't know what you're getting. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, 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 the brother, the other guy too, was his name? Um, O.C. the Great. He another one that was riding with Grandmaster J. So you don't know what you're going to get from here, here to there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want a King Samir? That's a King Samir people know. That be watching this right there. Be cussing out them Europeans like ain't no tomorrow. And this is why I think the brother put on the comment section why they had um, Rakim um, with a reactionary. But I wanted to illustrate the point that all is necessary in this fight when you're true to what you say that you believe in. And I've watched King Samir long enough to know that he's true to what he believes in. That brother that made videos of camping in the woods, and I don't think he was doing it for show. I don't feel he was doing it for show. I seen videos of this brother, are they not new videos, this brother living off the land. And I don't think he was doing it for show. I think he was doing it to illustrate that which may have to be done at some point in time. When I looked at some of these people like A.J. Frazier, they, they, they're renting boats and scuba diving. That's all for show. Jumping out of planes. That's all for show. Camping with a in a, in a field with some uh, Boy Scout kit tents. That's all for show. That's all for show. But if you ever seen some old Samir videos, nah, you you will get a different feel for that. But with that being said, let me let me move on. That was a mild King Samir. 
You follow me? Very mild. With that being said, I want to move on to my brother now. And I'm going to do a whole show. If not Saturday, coming next week. So we can get in tune. If you're not familiar with Rakim Balagoon, then I'm going to familiar you with him. I'm going to familiarize you with him tonight. And the only way I'm going to be able to do it is, number one, I need you, and I'm going to put the link in here. Let me get the link real quick. Um, I'm, if you're not familiar with them, I'm going to I'm, I'm trying to pull this up real quick. Hold up. I had it up earlier. They got all this spam out here on me. I can't find it. Can't find it. Uh, they got all this spam out here on me talking crazy. I can't even find it. I'm trying to find this video. Here it is. Here it is, family. Our initial open care. There we go. Here we go. So, family, I'm going to put this link in the chat so, so you can go back and familiarize yourself with it. And I might even re-upload it for those. So here's the video right here where the our brother came on this platform and i'm gonna tell you what he was talking about in a minute um this is the video here that i just put in the chat um and let me just play a little bit of it Three marches we'll be walking through seven i never understood as a kid with the word so so let that play out for a second Get past that. Who are not from Dallas? South Dallas, a historical black community in Dallas, which is majority black, impoverished. But we'll be walking through South Dallas or Oak Cliff, and we just be letting people know, hey, we love you. We love you. You know, you see us with this gun, but just understand that when we walk around with this gun amongst our community, it's not to intimidate our community. It's not to have. Uh, uh, a step above our community, but it's to let the community know that, hey, we're here and we're here to support you. You hear that? You hear that? This is the type of brother we're talking about. If anybody familiar with uh, Oak Cliff, Oak Cliff is the hood that's in every hood. You see what I'm saying? It's the hood that's in every hood around the country. This is 10 toes down, boots on the ground. It's not no internet stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's not no internet buffoonery. And so let me stop this real quick. And I want to take you to what I wanted to share with you. The brother right now has been, and we're going to go over the, go over the case either Sunday or one day next week. The brother right now is facing not facing, he has been convicted for a crime where quite possibly he's innocent. And I say quite possibly he's innocent because the same way they try to put words in our mouth uh, to say uh, uh, allegedly, 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 I'm using the term quite possibly. I feel as though he's innocent. And we're going to go over it either Saturday or, or Tuesday. I can only do it Saturday or Tuesday. So, but I'll make the fly up and we're going to go over it. But let me outline what I needed to outline. First of all, 
I would like for you to not only to look at the video I just put in there, I am also would like you to do this for me. Google the brother. And it's Google the brother. And you will see. Google them. You will see the difference between the real deal and those who's chasing cameras. Much of his life has been published on the airways due to him being targeted by the FBI with the black identity extremists propaganda. So when you Google him, I need you to do two things for me. When the brother got out of jail, where they locked him up unjustly, and he tells the story on my channel, he tells the story. Matter of fact, let me put the link in there again. He tells the story. This is the link to the video. And he'll tell the story in there. How they kick in the door. His children was there. I mean, his child was there, et cetera, et cetera. The point that I'm making is the brother was very gracious with giving interviews. And some of these people that interviewed him and that got ratings from his story that he was sharing from the kindness of this heart may not even know that he's locked up right now. And so in your spare time, if you Google Brother Rakim Balagoon and you can be gracious with an email to any of the people you may have seen that interviewed him, that have done a short video slide on him, they're all over the place. Mike.com did one on him. Send them an email and tell them that Rakim Balagoon need their support on his GoFundMe. All you have to do is Google the name. B-A-L-O-G-U-N. R-A-K-E-M or Rakim Balagoon. Balagoon Rakim. I'm telling you, family, all of these revolutionary groups, whether they like to hark a bay or not, should not allow one that stand for what they stand for to be in prison. And, and I'm telling you, no one, not many people even know about it. Not many people don't know about it. Now watch this. One second. So I'm going to do a whole spread on our brother. But for now, I'm asking you to support his GoFundMe. And we're going to read the GoFundMe in a minute. Let me read the GoFundMe. Now, I don't ask for you to support a lot of stuff. Let me share this real quick. When I come back, I'm going to make me a donation on my next show. Hold up. So this is what it says. Rakim Balagoon, chief of Guerrilla Mainframe, whose legal name is Christopher Daniels, is an American activist best known for his involvement in Facebook-related incident that occurred on December 12, 2017. This event became headline news in the United States. Balagoon enlisted in the U.S. Marine in 2001 and served in Iraq War in 2003. However, Balagoon decided his time serving in the U.S. Marine Corps as aligning, as alienating due to white officers behaving and racial attitudes 
um, and left the Marine Corps. He later became founding members of the group, such of, of groups such as Guerrilla Mainframe in 2008 and Huey P. Newton Gun Club in 2014, both based in Dallas, Texas. He cites the killing of unarmed black men by police officers as motivation for creating these groups. On December 12, 2017, he was startled awake in his Dallas home by a large crash of police officers screaming commands, which he and his 15-year-old son was forced outside of their Dallas home dressed in only their underwear. Rakim Bulagoon was then handcuffed and learned the FBI agents were investigating domestic terrorism and had been monitoring him for years for a post on Facebook criticizing police. Post by Balagoon stated he understood Makai Johnson, the perpetrator of the 2016 shooting of Dallas police officer, which was considered grounds for Balagoon's arrest. However, according to Balagoon, he was exercising his right to free speech when he talked about Johnson. He was not endorsing violence against individual police officers, but a general struggle against Dallas Police Department. The event made worldwide news due to Bullagoon being the first person ever to be publicly designated a black identity extremist and quota by FBI, sparking a national debate on the appropriateness of that term. In May 2018, Bullagoon had charges dropped against him. He is known for his creation of Guerrilla Mainframe Martial Arts Program. He trained people to learn how to use firearms, self-defense, and create a healthy lifestyle. He was a powerful political activist in, in the community, organizing self-reliance, self-determination, and things of that nature. He believed in the rights to bear arms and felt that people should be trained with it, particularly Black people. Uh, and you should go and read the rest of it. I'll save a little bit for you to read, but this is bigger than a YouTube show. You follow me? This is bigger than a YouTube show. And I would implore you to go and read it. And if you got $5, $2, $3, $20, some of y'all got hundreds of dollars. Some of y'all got tens of thousands. No, I'm just playing. But no, if you're able to support, I would implore you to support. I'm going to, I'm going to support with um, a, a few dollars that I can uh, afford. And I ask you to do the same. Uh, with that being said, let me go back on to this. Okay, I got about 10 minutes. Give me one second. Let me get back on to this real quick. So here's the brother in the training picture. This is when um, fighting the campaign to get him out. This picture was. This is on his GoFundMe page. And, and as I was saying about media, you know, he was gracious to give a lot of media outlets interviews because this was a hot story, you know, and some of these media channels benefited from the content. I mean, they benefit from the content. And because they benefited from the content, you know, it's... um imperative that maybe he may have created some relationships, some friendships, you know what I'm saying? And maybe they'll be willing to um, to assist. You know what I'm saying? So if you're, I'm trying to block all these crazy people. So if you're able to, um, I don't know, these people trying to, trying to flag my video, you see that? <laughs> so, um, if you're able to, to, to assist, I ask that you assist, but in the meantime, in between time family, they are definitely doing everything they can do to silence those who have a voice for those who have a program for those who are willing to stand 10 toes down and protect our community. Those who are standing 10 toes down and going to speak truth to power. They are creating diversions they are creating confusions and they're creating everything to stop us along the path to freedom we got a long ways to go but we have started the journey we have started the journey you know what i'm saying yeah i don't know why they're trying to flag this video right here uh let me see if i can get on my um i gotta get on there and block this where, where my mom's at man what y'all doing we gotta get them out of here they try to get me let me see if i can get on here and block do you love gantt charts
Let me see if I can get him. Okay, we got him gone. Look like we got him gone. <laughs> yeah. So, so with that being said, family, again, I'm asking uh, that y'all support our brother. You know, he's a real one. He's not a, a, a armchair revolutionary. Um, again, I'll put the that's the GoFundMe there, and the GoFundMe is at the bottom of the page. So, with that being said, family. Um, I don't want the video to be too long. I try to keep it an hour and a half so everybody can get a clean look at it. Also, family, I mean, a clean, uh, straight shot look at it as opposed to keep coming back and forth. Um, and another thing, family, uh, I think I'm going to be talking to a brother about the presentation I did about the Sunni fasting and Islam of Ramadan on Sunday. So that's what we're going to do. So I want to thank Black to Black Magazine for coming in the building. Cryptonomics for coming in the building. Sean, Sean, May, and thank each and every one of y'all, family. I'm telling you, thank Christian News. Thanks to each and every one of y'all. And we will be back, you know, to cover what happened to our brother, Rakim Balagoon. We were going to the details of what happened. But for now, do your own research. Do your own research. Google Rakim Balagoon. Do your research. The brother is in need of your assistance. And if you know anybody that is of any of these organizations, then put a bug in the air and tell them to assist. Real talk. Tell them to assist. Because this is not a YouTube revolutionary. This is not a YouTube revolutionary. You, you're not going to see him on YouTube. You're not going to see him chasing cameras. You're not going to see that. You're not going to see that. Anything you hear about this brother here is going to be something relative to boots on the ground. And I'm not saying boots on the ground the way you hear these YouTube revolutionaries talk. I'm talking about boots on the ground in his community. He has a family and he's sitting serving eight years when he don't have to. I'll tell that story on the next show. Like I said, I'm not sure if it's going to be Saturday or I'm not sure if it's going to be a Tuesday, but it's going to be one of those days. I got other shows coming out, but hey, it is what it is, family. So let me take you on out the door. He says to Harker Bay, Toronto Johnson, huh? An all-new episode premieres tonight. I call for a Moore's court on Brother Toronto oh, Johnson. If I built the whole plan, I ain't going nowhere. But I appreciate the concern, my beautiful African queen. I hope your hair is natural. You're not natural, baby. I see you got that perm in there. I still love you. You're gorgeous, but you're not nappy. You got to be nappy, baby. You got to be nappy. I can't grab it, I can't have it. It only takes a little bit of white brainwash to activate the cool chip. Heterosexual couples only. This is not a government funded activity. I have the right to discriminate. Heterosexual couples only. Donations, donations, gifts, gifts. I be that more you gon' be safe. I'ma be that more you gon' remember. I'll be that more you gon' remember. To Harker Bay one line till the law call my number. I'll be that more you gon' remember. I'ma be that more you gon' remember. That's right. I'll be that more you gon' remember. We're gonna have a national coons conference at FDMG. Yes, brothers and sisters. We have to have a national coons conference. Anybody who tells you they're running for office to help somebody. Smack the ass in the face. What you want to do? You want to box? You want to street rumble? Or you want to get into the intellectual boxing ring? Tyler Perry. Goddamn, brother. Can we please consider some other movies? Suit and tie, niggas. Suit and tie, niggas. See, I got credentials. You ain't got none, you dirty nigga. Ain't you the second nigga who sold drugs to go to kill it? Did your dumb ass say that on YouTube? You sold drugs to go to kill it? You counterproductive, degenerate, sell drugs 
to go to Kimmy. Still, I'm right here. And don't bring it. I'm right here. Don't bring it. I told you, consciousness. I don't play with y'all like that. But I knew you had to do it, nigga. They gassed you, and now they gonna pass you, nigga. They gassed. And I Y'all talk about the Grandmaster J with the N fact. Okay? I can't speak to him either. I can see the value of a brother showing up with a militia, with armed weapons, letting the white power structure of America know we ain't gonna take this shit no more. I can respect that. Is he serious? I don't us divided. We are the United States of America. One country to God. My point is, I'm not slandering Grandmaster J. I haven't seen sufficient proof. I be that boy you gon' remember. I shall be that boy you gon' remember. I be that boy you gon' remember. To Harker Bay front line till the law call my number. I be that boy you gon' remember. I'ma be that boy you gon' remember. That's right. I be that boy you gon' remember. He says to Harker Bay front line till the law call my number. The more than you a friend of mine I was told to watch my enemies now hold my line Those who speak against the prophet, they speak against me And I speak about the prophet, the who I am Who was the first to find you and bind you back To Morocco, the mountains, Mississippi, and Quebec Told you you wasn't black, prove it straight back You tripping off trust, you need to be tripping off that Now here we go again, acting like you a slave The same